Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is David, this is David K Reacts, and here on this channel I ramble with articulation, I hope, about a variety of musical audio and visual elements I pull out of the videos that I watch. And today I'm bringing a new artist to the channel, which is always an exciting time. Somebody who has been on my list for quite some time, that is Colm McGuinness, or Colm R. McGuinness. Um, Came up a little bit in uh, recommendations across Video Game Month, because I know he's done some video game stuff. And while this is not another Video Game Month uh, t-shirt notwithstanding, <laughs> um, this is a piece that is used in video games, but was not written for video games. And uh, But it is a quite fantastic piece of music, and that is I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire. And many of us probably know the version by the Ink Spots, especially if you are a gamer. It was used in uh, the Fallout series, most notably in Fallout 3, with an incredible cinematic. Uh, it just opens up on a dead bulb in a radio which flickers into life and over the course of about a minute and a half the camera just pulls back and you realize that the radio's had the glass smashed but it's in a bus and you pull back and the bus is wrecked and then you start to see the desolation of this post-apocalyptic wasteland beyond it and it pulls back and back and back and what's so great I really really like this touch while you are in the shell of the bus you hear the music as if it is a recording and then as you pass the back end of the bus which has been destroyed and you come out into the open world the music kind of becomes diagnosed like it is being played on the bus radio and all of a sudden it fades a little and it's distorted like we're hearing it on a radio in the distance and it as you pull away from the bus it gets quieter and quieter until you see a, a Brotherhood of Steel member comes in on one side carrying a laser gun and uh, uh, the Fallout theme kind of plays subtly in the background. It's a fantastic introduction uh, and I I loved the Ink Spots before I played Fallout, and then hearing that song, which was one of my favorites by them, um, I was super, super excited to hear that in the game. They do a really interesting thing with 99%, if not 100% of their songs, where they sing it through as a group for the entirety of the first iteration, and then there's a gentleman who has an incredibly deep voice who speaks it afterwards. He speaks the first half of the lyric uh, and makes it a little bit more push and pull. Like the, the song itself, I don't want to set the world on fire, that sort of thing. He might just sort of do like a, I don't want to set the world on fire, baby. And he'll wait for the music to catch up. I just want to start a flame in your pretty heart. And so he'll play with the lyrics a little bit and play with the timing a little bit. And then for the second half of that verse, they will sing us out. Um, it's quite wonderful. I love it. Uh, if you haven't heard the Ink Spots, go and listen to them. They're absolutely wonderful. Um, Whispering Grass is a particular favorite of mine. And When the Swallows Come Back to Capistrano. Uh, beautiful, beautiful music. Anyway... <laughs> With all that rambling, while we probably know that version the best, it's also been used in a bunch of other media, um, including the Fallout TV series, or at least a trailer for it. I don't, I've only, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, so I don't know if it was actually in the series. Um, it was not the first recorded version. I didn't realize this. It was written in 1938, and it was recorded by three different groups in 41, as far as I can tell, although a YouTube video for one of these did say 1940. Um... Originally recorded by a Harlan Leonard and his Rockets, with Myra Taylor performing the vocals. And I, I, I sort of thought to myself, oh, I've never heard this, let's go and check it out. Wow, is it a different song! The Ink Spots version is about 85, 86 beats a minute. So it's yum, dum, da, 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 da. Very slow, kind of, you know, chill, laid back piece of music. This version is like, I don't want to set the world on fire. And it's this really upbeat swing thing that's about 200 beats a minute. It's completely different. And I think that might be why it didn't work. It doesn't seem to suit the song, or at least not to me. Maybe that's because I know how it should be from knowing the Ink Spots version. But... 200 beats a minute, not right for this song at all. It was then recorded by the Ink Spots in 41 as well, and also by Horace Height and his musical Knights, uh, who has a much more crooner style to his singing, and is then joined in the second half by Donna and her Don Juans, who provide a chorus to sing the second half of the song. Both really interesting versions. I'm actually going to link to all three below, which I don't often do, but I think it's a fascinating comparison between the versions of this song. So go check those out. Also below, and I'm going to remember to say it before the video, woohoo! 
down below you will see the link to Colm's original performance of this. Please watch that before you watch this. Um, you'll also see a link to his channel down there as well. Um, but yeah, this is a song I love and I'm very excited about, if you hadn't guessed that by this point. <laughs> Colm has fascinated me for a while because so many people keep recommending him and then I got this recommendation for he's done tons of video game stuff and I didn't quite fit him into my video game month earlier this year so I'm doing him now. Um, that's about <laughs> about all I have to say about that which was quite a lot uh, but I will say firstly welcome back to the channel welcome if this is your first time here if it is the way I work is I'm going to watch this straight through from beginning to end commenting and emoting over the top of it I will then go back and watch it oh and I need to turn my notifications off back in a minute. Sorry, I'm recording this at the end of the workday. Uh, like, my workday is done, but there are still messages flying around, so I got a few there. Apologies, they're off now. Um, I will go back and watch a second time, and this time I will pause, interrupt, and offer what commentary and analysis I feel I can, based on what I've just seen and heard, and the foreknowledge of having seen it once before. Uh, please do like the video, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and if you would care to support the channel, you can do so by heading to buymeacoffee.com forward slash davidkreacts, to patreon.com forward slash davidkreacts, or by leaving a super thanks here on YouTube. All of those very gratefully received, and I would like to say my thanks to D. Uh, now, pr uh, pronunciation apology if I get this wrong. Uh, D. Maynard Schluter, who recently joined my Patreon. Thank you very much indeed for becoming a member. And the list of my patron names will be at the end of this video. That's it, I think. So let's get on with this thing. This is Colm R. McGuinness covering the Ink Spots version of I Don't Want to Set the World on Fire. I don't want to set the world on Oh, I like the vintage fire. sound he's given himself. I'm guessing that's an affectation. I just want to start a flame in your heart. Black and white, lovely. This is beautiful. I have but one desire. Give very vintage vibrato and effect as well. That one is you. No other will do. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I just want to be the one you love. And with this is your great. Mission, that you feel the same. I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. Believe me, I don't want to see. Oh, the, the world slightly like the shaky effect, out of focus effect of an old video. That's so good. I just want to start a flame in your heart. I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. Okay, we're going full ink spots. I love you too much. Oh, he does say that. I just want to start a great big flame down in your heart. You nice see, excuse for a guitar interlude. We're down inside of me. <laughs> Darling, I have only one desire. <laughs> And that one desire is you. <laughs> so matter of fact. Nobody else ain't gonna do. <laughs> I've lost so That's so good. I just wanna be the one you love. And with your ambition, that you feel the same. Lovely harmony in the background too, the whole way through this. Nice. Oh, that's really cute. He did a really good job with that. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go down. I want to see if there's anything in the description about this before I start talking. Um, 
Oh, it looks like he's sponsored by the sweater company. That did look like a comfy sweater, I'm not going to lie. Um, boo, boo, doo, boo, doo, boo, boo, boo. Um, <laughs> he's made two shorts remixing this, and one of them is entitled Rate My World War II Era BBC Accent. Uh, I actually thought that was a really good attempt. I'm assuming he's American. Okay, so I was just reading the description, and it seems it's it's uh, obviously his own information and uh, a couple of shorts and the sponsorship so not a lot there um but he ha i noticed he has hashtagged it fallout cover which makes complete sense by the way he presented it because he's kind of gone what's interesting is although it's the inkspots version that they play in fallout the style that he has gone for in his vocal use um especially in the spoken section where he kind of takes on that uh i know it's kind of transatlantic i think the um the Ameri slightly American accent for the spoken section is very similar to some of the voices that you hear on the radios in Fallout. So this isn't this is an Xbox cover, but I noticed again I missed this in the title or I wasn't paying attention to it. It's I don't want to set the world on fire. Fallout the Xbox cover. Um, if I bring up here, you'll see right here in the title. So he's very definitely gone for that vibe, and I think the fact that he uses some of the um, uh, the EQ effects and things like that. Like, he's partly going... He does... He's going for the ink spot sound a little bit, uh, even though he's going for different accent work. Like, there's a little bit of the vocal quality of the ink spot's uh, lead singer in there. Um just a touch along with the British accent and so on. Um, but I really, really like the mix and match he's done of styles here. So let's go back, watch this again. This is wonderful. I really like this and it's very simple, but very effective. So what a simple start is this. Um, we have shelves, we have a blank door. The shelves don't have a lot on them. This is clearly intended to be like a shelter, uh, and it's getting towards the end of it by the looks of it. He's eaten pretty much everything he had stashed, uh, stashed up, excuse me. <clears throat> but I love this simplicity of just a man in a sweater, body shot, no head, hands playing guitar, that's what we're hearing as well. So we're seeing what we're hearing. It's nice and easy to pair up the visual and the audio. But in so many respects, in five seconds, in, in two seconds, he has set a style right here. Um, the sweater, obviously contemporary, I assume, but it does, that kind of sweater also evokes a vintage retro look. Um, and this simplicity combined with the black and white uh, combined with the little bit of EQ and effects that he's put on to kind of give a very specific sound to the guitar. Very, very scene setting. Wonderful opening shot here. Oops. I'm trying to decide if the guitar is double tracked and there's one note that makes me think that. I mean, they've, they've got a ring to them, but that could be an effect. But there's that kind of brum effect almost where it's like two notes i'm wondering if he's double tracked himself possible regardless i really like the the guitar sound that we've got there it's got a little bit of openness it's got a little bit of reverb it's got a little bit of like kind of vintage cutoff quality that a recording would have really really nice stuff i like is there's a little knock on the guitar too Yeah, there's just a little tap there. I don't know if that was deliberate. Sorry, one more time. This intro is just, there's a surprising amount happening in a small amount of space. I don't want to oh, oh, even more. Sorry, yes, I did hear a little knock, but... Oh, he did do it! Can't stop it there. There's a little artifact here on... The, uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is a part of his filter, but it's kind of got that little screen tearing or like film tearing look that you'd have on an old film. That's, I love the touches to this. Okay, since we've stopped here, let's just have a look at this. Great hairstyle. I love this kind of airman jacket that he's got over the top of it with the wings and all this kind of stuff. It looks like it could be a military uniform. Um, very, very effective. And now we see these shelves in greater detail and there's, what, five things on there? Yeah, you've got about one and a half days left of food, buddy. And then you've got to go out and scavenge some more and go up against the rad scorpions and the superhuman mutants and all the other things. The super mutants, rather, I should say. Um, and uh, all the other things that you can find out there in the Fallout Wasteland. Um, all video game terminology, by the way, for those of you who don't know the Fallout games um, or in-world terminology. But I love that we've got this look of this bear. Uh, he hasn't stocked 
the uh, one, it probably would have been a pain in the neck to do it, but he hasn't stocked the shells fully. You've just kind of got that small amount there and that's all you've got. It's so effective. And I love that the black and white, it's almost like there's a, a hint of sepia in there as well. It it feels like it's not quite black and white, and it, that might just be my eyes playing a trick on me, but it's almost that slightly off-white-ish. And I really, really like that. It gives it a more vintage quality for my view. I don't want to set the world on fire. <laughs> it's, I, I couldn't decide at the beginning because I've never heard his work before. I didn't know how much he was parodying there. But that... Like that really strong... I can't do a vibrato that fast. But the really strong vibrato he's put in there that would be very kind of Cole Porter-ish. Um, I love that he's using that. It really dates this work. It makes it feel like it's something that was recorded a long time ago. Um, also, I think he did a pretty solid attempt at a BBC accent, so well done. Um... But yeah, I really like that he's chosen to use that because it isn't a sound that we hear nowadays, really. Uh, and so it does kind of set this back into its era, which is very, very cool. Oh, I love what the guitar does there. You get this dum chunk. Dum, chung, the whole way through, and as soon as you get the flame in your heart, boom, 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 we're back into that again. Really, really nice. This beautiful kind of lugubrious heart humming that's going on behind. Very slow, simple chord changes, very ink spots. I really, really like what he's done with that too, um, because it's just, it's a little bit of support to the main vocals, but it's so far in the background, like it really is support. This is this is almost the definition of choral support, in the sense that it's so far away, you almost don't recognize it. It's it could this could just be lead and guitar, but there's just a little something filling out that sound. Really, really nice. A flame in your heart. In my life I have but one I feel like the original lyric was in my heart. Back in a sec. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So the original lyric is in my heart I have but one desire. I actually, um, I duetted this with voice play on TikTok a while ago. Um, and so I was thinking about that as well. It's like, did I sing the lyric wrong? But no, that's, so he's actually changed the lyric here. I wonder if any of the other versions sings that. I wasn't paying enough attention when I listened through to it to know if any other version, or maybe Fallout changed it at some point. I don't know. Um, but... Honestly, in my life I have but one desire. It, I, in, in its own way, is just as much of a statement as in my heart I have but one desire. Uh, so I like that. In my life I have but one I love also, uh, one, I love that we're still getting these flickers across the screen, these little little uh, film tears. But I also love that we've just got this very, very gently moving camera. It's just very, very slowly orbiting. Um, and there's no snap movements in this. It's just, it's, it's just there. It, it, the camera isn't a personality in this, um, except for those few moments where it obviously is designed to make it look like a little bit more like handheld sort of thing. But it's just a simple, subtle movement that just gives a little something rather than just flat on, you know, like I'm doing. The camera doesn't move for me. I could sit here, I guess, and just slowly do this the whole time. And no, that's really difficult to do. And just I slowly move off screen. <laughs> I'm just being silly now. But there's a... That gentle motion gives it a little bit of life. And it doesn't need to be a lot. It's the, He's keeping it very simple. And that's exactly what this needs. So I like that he's doing that. My life I have but one desire And that one is you Lovely, just in the background there. Just ever so slightly coming out over the top there. It's still very much in the background, but you can hear just enough to feel that little chord change happen vocally as well as in the guitar. I I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. 
that's where worldly acclaim, that's where the BBC drops because we don't have the hard R. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim, not worldly acclaim. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's the one bit of his accent where I'm like, whoop, you just slipped backwards there. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I just want to be the one you love. Oh, I love that love. Love. There's almost like a love in that. I just want to be the one you love. That's beautiful. And with your admission that you feel the same, I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of believing. I, there's a really nice, the guitar there. Admission that... I'm, I'm just going to listen a tiny bit further back, actually. I want to see. I think this might be the deepest we've heard the guitar play. Oh, and with your admission that you feel the same, I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. Be- bom, 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 down there, bom. Just those, those low notes at the bottom there. This is just a really nice touch to be kind of reinforcing that bass a little bit. That's really cool. Hey. I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of, believe me, I don't... This, this is great. Like, how often have you seen that in old video where the focus is slightly off and it's a little bit shaky? This, again, he's doing these tiny things that set this piece in an error, and I love it. Really cool effect here. The goal I'm dreaming of... He even goes slightly out of focus here, but that switch is, oh, beautiful. Be- I don't want to set the world on fire. Again, world. Again, I'm I'm playing it up a little bit. He probably did that right at the beginning, but I was focusing on other things. I just want to start a fl- Start would be a start. Has that little bit of American inflection. I just want to start. I love that we gradually pan across here and there's another shelf and we see, okay, yeah, he's got maybe two days of food now. <laughs> but these little, it's such a plain shelf too. Like you can kind of imagine this being an old fashioned shelving unit or something like that. This is, the, ah, I really like what he's done with this. The flame in your heart. I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. <laughs> the change as well. A flame in your heart. I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. Like the, the, the total vocal shift there. That's beautiful. I love it. It was so unexpected. And it's, he's kind of semi-serious, but also not entirely with the BBC. And then this, the deadpan delivery. Like, you can imagine this man sitting across this very, you know, kind of the modern woman for the time sitting there having dinner. And this man across, like, absolutely plank rigid. I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. I'm being incredibly emotional right now. Um, Which (laughs) is just such a great choice for this monologue. I love it. I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. (laughs) I love you too much. (laughs) I just want to start a great big flame down in your heart. (laughs) It's so good. Way down inside of me. Darling, I have only one desire. And the fact that he's doing all of this over the identical backing that we had before, there's just, they were being non-emotional because they were supporting his vocals and hearing that non-emotional background now, like this um, cha, um, cha, like this, you could do, you could, if you wanted, make that into something a bit more kind of, um, uh, add some feeling to it and, and make it a little bit less staccato and boom, cha. Boom, cha- like it's very cut off. The uh, the the background, it's just literally humming, changing tunes, and all that kind of stuff. It supports how deadpan this delivery is, and I am so here for it. Way down inside of me, darling, I have only one desire, <laughs> and that one desire is you. 
<laughs> That's the line. Nobody else ain't gonna do. <laughs> and that one desire is you. It's so flat. <laughs> This is is really good, and this is this is exactly what I was talking about beforehand with the um, the style of how the ink. He's doing it exactly the way the ink spots would do, where they speak that much of it, and now they come back in with singing from here on out. So he's done that, but he's obviously going into full parody as he does it, which I think is a fantastic choice. And I know nobody else ain't gonna do. Ah, there we get a better so. Mm-hmm. Was that it? No, I was. I think I said it was da 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 earlier, which that's not actually what they're singing. <laughs> a lovely da da da. The half step up there, really, really nice. Gonna do. Ah, there you go. So they, it, he does have two guitars playing because one did the do dum dum there, while the other one was still doing the strum pattern. Now we come in with the. Um, uh, the chorus of, of Colm and his Colms, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, this is, again, exactly what the x did in their version. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I love that. I've lost all ambition. Up there at the top, just very quietly in the background. There's this fairly tight harmony that's all in roughly the same... Uh, vocal uh, sort of strength and projection, and then this one I've lost all uh, right in the background there. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I just wanna be the one you love. Oh, oh, what was that? I just wanna be the one you love. I just, I just wanna be the one you love. I think it pops up there. I just wanna be the one you love. That's lovely. That's so nice too, because you have this um I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. We cut back down to just the soloist and the humming, whereas previously the vocals all singing the words together, supporting the weightier meaning behind it. But then it comes down to me. I, I'll have got there. That's a really nice moment to drop the sung vocals back out for the humming. Really, really nice. I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. How <laughs> he's over exaggerating with his eyebrows so much as well. Again, hard uh, right there at the. Uh, did I even hear a T? Yeah, the T just isn't there. And then a piano at the end. Was there a piano there the whole time? I didn't hear. I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. I love you too much. Bom, bom, bom. That note down there could almost be a piano. I thought it was a second guitar, but. I just want to start a flame in your heart. But then you get the bum, brum, bum, brum. Those two chords are very clearly a piano. There's a double bass. Like, have I just. Did I just instrumentally screw up what I was hearing the whole time? I, uh, I just want to start. And that one desire is you. And I know. Nobody else See, that could be a double do. bass, but I feel like it's a guitar. This is interesting. When does it come in? I've lost all ambition for world. Set the world on 
Again, it could be a guitar, but it feels it could also be a double bass. Bass, piano, bass, piano, bass, piano. Interesting! Interesting! Sorry, I took a little minute on the ending there, but that just really fascinated me how he snuck that in when I wasn't listening. That's great. What a wonderful arrangement. That's really, really good. I have no idea how typical this is of Colm's work, obviously. Um, I picked on it because it was tangentially related to the reason he was recommended to me recently, but is also a song that is a standalone, uh, happens to have been used in video games. And The Simpsons, I think it was in an episode of The Simpsons at one point, and a bunch of other media. Um, so, therefore, it seemed like an interesting introduction. Let me know, you know, A, what you think of this song, and B, should I listen to other Colm? Is it going to be very, very different? You let me know. Um, and I'd be fascinated to see what else is out there. I really enjoyed that. I think he did... It was interesting, because his cover was both faithful and beautifully sort of parody and I really really enjoyed that blend I think that was really really good fun and I like the tonal choices that he picked both the serious ones and the goofy ones I think the combination was bang on and that's not always the easiest thing to do so yeah very very good um that's it for this week I think thank you so much for watching with me I hope that you got something from this be it the song be it Colm uh, check either or both out if you haven't have a look at those other versions of the ink spots as well and let me know afterwards which is your favorite and let me know particularly did you enjoy the fast version more and if so why I would be really interested to know that because to me it just wasn't right but then maybe that's confirmation bias of knowing what I think that the th the song is going to sound like and being surprised when it wasn't that um yeah let me know your thoughts I would be very interested to hear thank you for watching I really appreciate it especially if you're still here right at the end please do like this video hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and if you would care to support the channel you can do so by going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash david k reacts where you can leave a donation of any amount to patreon.com forward slash david k reacts where I have two very low donation tiers that's just for those who would like to support me in an ongoing basis and you can also get access to my discord there as well and if you care to you could also leave a super thanks here on youtube any of those very gratefully received no pressure to do them of course uh, but they really do it's uh, I, while I'm not using this as a source of income particularly those little bits do help me to carve out the time uh, to be able to keep recording these videos so um, for thank you very much if you are supporting and if you would care to I would be very appreciative uh, that's everything I think I'll be back next week with more cool stuff whatever it happens to be uh, thank you again for joining me uh, I really really appreciate the time you spend with me here on this channel take care of yourselves have an absolutely wonderful uh, night evening afternoon daytime twilight dusk early morning I don't know what else is there witching hour <laughs> have an absolutely fantastic um 10 40 p.m let's see if anyone in europe is watching us the second i release it um, take care of yourselves and i'll see you in the next video bye for now